the aim of this set of instruction lab manuals is to cover every single instruction available to the 10 point Micrologix 1000. So here are two instructions that people don't use very often. You seldom ever see them in logic, but since we want to provide a lab exercise for every single instruction, here are the square root and the negate instructions. Without having floating point, the square root has very limited value as an instruction. Here in the lab we had you execute the square root instruction on a register containing 157. But the square root of 157 is not 13. 157 is a prime factor. It can only be divided by itself in, or 1. The second rung is a check for the first rung in the slab exercise. The square root of 157, if you had floating point, would be 12.53 rounded off. Without floating point, you get a result of 13 rounded off, halfway between the square root of 144, which is 12, and 169, which is 13, which would be 156.5 if, if you were to continue that process. So try 156 for N70, and then try 157 for N70. The point is, without floating point, real data types, the square instruction is fairly limited. You will get a rounded off value in most cases. The long and short of the negate instruction is that when it is executed on a true condition of the rung, it is exactly the same process as multiplying by a negative one. We demonstrate this by using two rungs in the lab. One uses the negate instruction, the other multiplies the source by a value of negative one. The results are the same. However, I will say that rung zero takes less memory space and probably executes a little faster than rung one. So. And I think the instruction is fairly straightforward, the negate instruction. If anybody's troubleshooting and they come across a negate instruction, they're going to see that the source is N70 and the destination is N71, and what is in N71 is basically the result of N70 multiplied by negative 1.